now. It's Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Gray. Well, the semifinals are set at the World Cup in Brazil. Argentina, they're going to uh, face the Netherlands, while Germany will play Brazil. Brazil playing without Neymar in the lineup due to a fractured vertebrae. The Whitecaps back at action at BC Place tonight, playing the Seattle Sounders in a Cascadia matchup. And, well, thank you for Whitecaps winning this one. 1-0 one the final there. We're going to break down those events on the program this evening. Good evening and welcome. It is Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk. My name's Tyler Green. Right here on AM650 Radio in Vancouver. You can catch me on Twitter at TylerGreenFC. The show also available via a webcast and live streaming at www.am650radio.com. Thank you for listening to us, watching us perhaps, whether that's live or on the podcast. The first half kickoff is brought to you by KO, Kevin O'Toole, and findaproperty.ca. Looking to sell your home and want somebody with a successful record? Use Kevin O'Toole and findaproperty.ca successful track record to sell your property. Full details at findaproperty.ca. Kevin O'Toole, licensed realtor with Prudential Sussex Realty online at findaproperty.ca. Well, the World Cup has kept us very much entertained through the group stages and the first part of the knockout rounds, but it seems lately like the, the games are getting a little bit tighter, a little bit uh, perhaps less entertaining to some. For me, though, I look at these games and uh, the example uh, of earlier today with the Netherlands taking on a, a Costa Rica side. And, you know, for me, it's just you can't beat the fact that in that game, especially late in the last few minutes, one little mistake could result in a goal that will knock your country out of the World Cup or take your uh, country to the semifinals. So for me, despite the fact that maybe we're not seeing as free flow play, you know, maybe not end to end action, it's just that much more tense. It's those tense moments that make the World Cup a little bit more exciting. And adding to that excitement are some injury concerns because, well, look at uh, Angel Di Maria for Argentina. He's questionable for the big matchup on Wednesday with Argentina and the Netherlands colliding. But bigger than that, because there's a whole country, basically, <laughs> on his back with a broken back, as Mike Tyson would say, my back is broken. But Neymar, a fractured vertebrae out of the World Cup. Should make for a very interesting matchup between the Brazilians and Germany. That one on Tuesday. Who replaced... Now, you can't replace Neymar. But you have to replace Neymar. Who do you replace him with? And how do you replace him? It's a, it's a big question. Do you completely change everything? Do you just put somebody in there and hope that they can do something as good as, as Neymar has done? It's going to be very interesting to see what uh, big Phil Scolari does with that Br a Brazilian side. In Germany, <laughs> they're, they're talking about it. A lot of people saying it's, it's, they're, they're winning ugly. They're not winning nicely. <laughs> it's, it's not the, the, the tiki-taka that they had kind of been playing with. But they're getting the job done. And, and in the end, at the World Cup time, that's all that really matters. You get the job done, you win the games. But it should make for an interesting, very interesting uh, matchup. Meanwhile, one of the promising youngsters in Whitecaps land is Marco Bustos. Potentially a guy that could be... Uh, one of the big next big players for the Canadian national team, well, could be a big potential player for the Chilean national team. Looks like he's a, accepted an invite to participate in a Chile 
U20 camp. How do you feel about that? Leads us to our barber pool tonight, presented by barberandco.ca. How do you feel about Marco Bustos going to a chilly U20 camp? Does it upset you? Are you okay with him going? There's word that he's going to be going to the Canadian camp a couple weeks after. So it's a little bit like he's going out with two girls, deciding which one's going to put out first. So how do you feel about Marco Bustos going to the Chile U20 camp? You can tweet us your thoughts with the hashtag BarberPoll on Twitter at SoccerTalk650. Tyler Green FC, you can also email us at SoccerTalk650 at gmail.com. And uh, weigh in on our Barber Poll on the uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash SoccerTalkVan. And, of course, the Whitecaps in action tonight. Cascadia rival, Seattle Sounders, they win. Fernandez, Sebastian Fernandez, with a fantastic goal from just outside the 18. Just right foot, swerving, fry. Uh, not a great attempt at it. A little bit caught flat-footed, I thought. But a great shot nonetheless by Sebastian Fernandez. The poll question, by the way, the Barber Poll, brought to you by Barber & Co. Gastown, Yale Town, the Financial District, then a new location at Canby and 18th. They're on Twitter, at Barber & Co., or visit barberandco.ca. All right, a very busy program for you this evening, so we're going to get right into it. Coming up in the first half of the program, Kia, Vancouver Soccer Talk contributor and Goal.com writer Simon Fudge and I, we're going to dive into the starting 11. We're going to discuss that Barber Poll. We're also uh, going to have some World Cup chat. Whose uh, stock has risen? Whose stock has fallen? And uh, Van Hall. Is he a crazy man or is he a genius with putting Tim Krul in net for the penalty shootout? It's one of the issues we'll debate in the starting 11. As well, also some World Cup chat with Jonathan Tannenwald, who covers Major League Soccer and the U.S. men's national team for philly.com he'll be joining us at 10 30 to kind of recap a little bit about the world cup but also look at this u.s men's national team a lot of people saying 2018 that's the u.s's year now they're going to be big big into that tournament so we'll find out a little bit more from jonathan tannenwald and what he thinks this u.s team has to offer present and future of course our world cup coverage is brought to you by the Donnelly Group .ca. In the second half of the program, expert physios David Santos will be by. He, of course, in Brazil to chat about Neymar's fractured vertebrae. What does that mean? Obviously, out of the World Cup. But could he be back for Barcelona's start to the season? We'll find out in a few minutes, uh, just after 11 o'clock. And, of course, we'll also hear some Whitecaps audio and get into uh, the match a little bit more with Simon Fudge, who is not beside me today. He is at BC Play Stadium, so he will join us uh, from BC Place to do the starting 11 in just a matter of minutes. And as always, we'll have the manager's rant. And despite the fact that Simon's not here, we will still have some hot fudge. Of course, in studio with me, I've got this great co-host. And we found out his name last week. We didn't know what his name is. He doesn't talk a lot, so it's going to be very quiet from him. But we, we do have a, an in-studio co-host who isn't going to speak, but we found out his name. His name is Mo, and it's Mo the Moose. If you're watching on the webcast at am650radio.com, there he is, wearing his Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk scarf, wearing his LG 104.3 t-shirt. It's Mo the Moose joining me in studio. Very similar, actually, looking to, uh, to Simon Fudge surprisingly bigger ears it's about the only difference <laughs> but yeah simon will join us in, in just a matter of minutes you're listening to kia vancouver soccer talk right here on am 650 radio right now score the best price during kia's 2014 fifa world cup sales event plus get zero percent financing for 84 months and up to four thousand in cash bonuses on select models 396 southwest marine drive at yukon Again, I'm Tyler Green. 
Mo the Moose in studio, Key Vancouver Soccer Talk and Goal.com contributor Simon Fudge and I debate the starting 11 next. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM 650. What's it like to score in the beautiful game? Come to Kia Vancouver before July 13th and score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4,000 in cash bonuses on select models. And only at Kia Vancouver, score free lifetime car washes, free lifetime oil changes, free lifetime airport shuttle and parking, and always service with a smile. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise at kiavancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. The 2014 season of EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. Welcome to the front lines of the game. Welcome to the big league. The one that provides an elevated level of competition for high performance players within BC and contributes to player development for the Canadian national team and professional opportunities here and abroad. This is where you're going to see the top youth players in action. Catch some of the most intense soccer in the province. EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. For information and up Coming games, check out bcsoccer.net. Not that your stylist at the salon isn't doing a good job, but man, you deserve the big red leather barber chair experience of Barber & Co. Here's how it works. Go to barberandco.ca. Book your appointment at one of the four barber shops in Gastown, Yale Town, the Financial District, or Camby and 18th. You can just walk in, too, and get your hair cut, hot shave, buzz cut, fade, or beard trim experience. A great wedding party idea, too. Barberandco.ca. Held high above the heads of soccer supporters everywhere. The Soccer Scarf is a world-class icon of support. And Global Scarves can turn it into a high-profit, high-visibility, high-spirited fundraising idea for your club, organization, or school. Global Scarves has been producing high-quality, UK-knitted soccer scarves for over 40 years. They offer low prices for fundraising groups with no sacrifice on quality. A welcome change from chocolate. Find out more about Global Scarves. Contact Brad at GlobalScarves.com or visit GlobalScarves.com. Pain or injury slowing you down? Take it to the choice of many top athletes. Expert Physio. Serving the Lower Mainline for over 35 years, the team at Expert Physio is dedicated to individualized care with specialized services such as orthotics, acupuncture, IMS, plus dizziness, pelvic floor, and certified hand therapies. Over 300 physicians referred to Expert Physio last year, and 100% of patients surveyed said they choose Expert Physio again. You're in good hands with Expert Physio. Burnaby Heights or at 8 Rinks. ExpertPhysio.ca Gracious, great balls of fire. Come and join the fun with me, Red Robinson, at the jukebox musical Red Rock Diner, now playing at the Granville Island stage. Get ready to rock and roll your way through Vancouver's 50s and 60s music scene. You'll enjoy some of my favorites, like Great Balls of Fire and Diana. Stay by me, Diana. I'd love to see you there. Tickets start from just $29 at artsclub.com. Red Rock Diner, that's artsclub.com. Back, back. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Gray. Whitecaps beating their Cascadia rivals, Seattle Sounders FC. 1-0 tonight. We'll hear from some of the parties involved in that match in the program a little bit later on. Plus, World Cup chat with Jonathan Tannenwald in about 15 minutes. Right now, score the best price during... Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event, plus get 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4000 in cash bonuses on select models. Kia Vancouver, 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. Well, let's get into the starting 11. My name's Tyler Green on Twitter, at TylerGreenFC. Show contributor and Goal.com writer Simon Fudge is at SimonFudge74. Let us know what you think of the starting 11. Agree? Disagree? Hate everything we have to say, let us know. Number one on the starting 11 as Simon Fudge joins us on the line from BC Play Stadium. Simon, number one, 10 Major League Soccer players made the U.S. team roster. How big of an impact has MLS played in this World Cup? And which MLS player has had the best World Cup? 
Well, I think it's, they've had a huge impact. The fact that they've just garnered respect from pundits in places like the United Kingdom that I've been listening to over the last couple of weeks, I think, stands uh, as, a, as a testament to what they have been able to do. I mean, Giancarlo Gonzalez of Columbus Crew today playing ever so well for Costa Rica, scoring a very decisive penalty is just one guy. It's, they've made a huge impact, and I think they've, they've shown a lot of people around the world that the league that they're coming from is, is getting better and is a very good one and, and is probably worth uh, having a closer look at. As for the best player, best MLS player that I think has been to the World Cup, it's got to be DeAndre Ledwin of the U.S. for me. He, even though he's come off the bench, his stock was raised by the performances that he put in, and he's already attracting interest from Europe. Yeah, I would have to agree with you that uh, about Yedlin. For me, he, he's he's the guy that I think has made the biggest name for himself. He's been able to uh, step his game up, and and like you said, his stock has has risen a lot through this tournament. And he, for me, is the guy that I think has taken it, it to the next step for Major League Soccer. And like you said, guys have been playing an integral part in different teams and different places. Uh, you look at some teams who have. Uh, even some MLS players that were injured that couldn't quite uh, take it to the next step because that player was missing and he was an integral part of the team. So MLS players definitely having uh, 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 an impact on this World Cup. Number two, Brazilian star Neymar is out of the tournament with a broken vertebrae. He has been a leader in for the squad, and so who will replace him? And can Brazil win without him? Well, I think Brazil can win without him. Um obviously uh, they've got the country at their back. They're playing at home. They haven't lost in, you know, how many years? Uh, it's been decades since they've lost at home in a, in a competitive match. So I think they can win without him. Who's going to replace him? Well, I don't think you can really replace a guy like Neymar, but what I think they can do is uh, lift up the entire team and, and play that much better. Step it up, you know, 110%, you know, the old cliche. But it's going to be guys like, uh, David Luiz, who we saw score uh, in the in the matchup uh, just uh, you know a couple days ago, it, it's going to be guys like that who get in on set pieces and score. A guy like Hulk that gets in and uh, can try to get a goal somewhere. A guy like Oscar trying to get in and get a goal. So it, it, I think it's a team that is going to be able to replace Neymar. It's not going to be one single player. For me, in terms of someone who's going to replace Neymar as a leader, it has to be David Luiz. He needs to take uh, the team by the by the scruff of the neck on board. I, I would probably expect him to wear the captain's armband in the semifinal uh, against Germany because, of course, they don't have Thiago Silva through suspension. And as you say, the likes of Hulk and Oscar have also got to step up and, and show that they can offer the kind of attacking prowess as well, as well as Fred. I mean, he's not. Uh, Fred has been very disappointing despite getting the number of starts that he's had in this tournament. I think it could be a struggle, and uh, you know, going up a team against Germany uh, it will require the rest of this squad of, of Scolari's to to make up for for big omissions in Neymar and Thiago Silva. Number three, which team is now faced with more press pressure? Brazil to win at home without Neymar and Silva, or Germany? who are playing against a weaker side? I think it's Brazil at home. I still think the pressure and the expectation of the fans and, and the fact that they're in their own backyard and the expectations are, are just as high as they as, as they always been, despite the fact they are missing two very important players. So I think the pressure still remains on them, although there may be some level of sympathy from their supporters to the fact that they they are missing him, so it's it almost might be a sense that the, the supporters have got to be the ones that now has to lift the team and make them overcome. But I still think, in a lot of ways, the pressure remains on the host team. For me, I think you know Germany has that pressure. They they now are going against a team that is a weak inside. Everyone thinks that Germany might be able to go in there and win that game. And I look at Brazil, and like you said, a lot of people are already mourning the almost death of uh, Neymar because of his injury and with Silva in. I think they, a lot of people in Brazil have already written this team off now and saying, yeah, our chance of winning is gone. So I think the pressure is really now on a Germany side that is playing a weaker team. Number four, what do you make of Netherlands coach Louis van Gaal making the last-minute sub to put in Tim Krul in goal for the penalty shootout crazy or genius uh i think it's genius and, and i look at it a couple different ways one it's a little bit of gamesmanship and uh you know the i think the opposition going what is he doing what is he thinking and, and 
it is something that he has had to have been thinking about because he didn't use that third substitute until that moment. So he obviously uh, was looking at it for a particular reason. The other thing I like it is that uh, the whole game, Netherlands goalkeeper just has to worry about playing that game. And as they're inching closer and closer to those penalty kicks, Krul is sitting on the bench and can be studying and studying. And he picked, he guessed, what, however you want to call it, the right direction each and every time makes two saves, two huge saves, and for me, uh, genius from Van Gaal. Yeah, I think, as a, particularly as it looked planned, I think it was genius as well from Van Gaal. Um, but there was a moment um, in one of the penalties, it was maybe one of the ones that Krul conceded, that he basically stared down one of the Costa Rican players and gave and I could almost sense that he's sort of saying, I know where you, which side you were going to go, which meant it was prepared, and it gave me the sense that uh, he had been studying where they were going, and obviously they were putting shots in their last penalty shooter against Greece mostly to his left-hand side, and that's where he ended up making the save. So for me, it was also a genius move by the future Manchester United manager. Number five, which player has upped their profile most at the World Cup? Has to be Jaimes Rodriguez of Colombia. Uh, here's a player that is currently with uh, deep pocket side in, uh, in terms of money, in terms of uh, playing for Monaco. Um, but there's no question this is a player that is going to probably make a move to one of the three or four or five big teams in, in the world very, very soon. Um, Colombia coming into this World Cup was one in which they didn't have a Radamel Falcao, so how were they going to do? And he basically has filled that void of Falcao's absence and made a star of himself in his own light, and he has raised his stock Im immensely as a result of his performances. For me, uh, Guillermo Ochoa, uh, the Mexican goalkeeper, is, is the guy that uh, I think has raised his stock the most, uh, uh, just coming up and performing superbly against some very tough competition and, and really almost sing single-handedly keeping Mexico in a lot of those games. So for me, he is the guy that has uh, just upped his profile the most at the World Cup so far. Number six, which player's value has decreased the most at the World Cup? Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's Hazard who, with Belgium. And, and really, I think um, Belgium were a lot of people's dark horses going in and, and really underwhelmed, I think, a lot of people. Uh, but Hazard, uh, so much uh, potential with this, with this kid, uh, so much ability to, to score goals and, and do a lot of things. And, and we've seen what he can do. And he just kind of drifted through the uh, the World Cup, and, and for me, uh, decreased his value. I agree. I, I, I went with Belgium's Ed, Eden Hazard as well, uh, especially today when, when you would have expected more from him and, and being more incisive, especially in the second half against Argentina when it was incumbent upon Belgium to try and take the game uh, to, the, to Argentina. They just never seemed to do so, and it, it was just a reflection of, of just the way Belgium played. I mean, they did enough to get by and get to this point in the tournament, but it was just not uh, something that we we expected more and we didn't get it. And maybe it was because it was their first tournament altogether as a team and individually for Hazard himself. But uh, he came in with, with, with high expectations and he just didn't live up to them. Number seven, earlier this week, Brazilian superstar Kaká signed as Orlando City's first designated player. Are you excited by this acquisition? And do you agree with them and expect to continue uh, that uh, many other elite European Bay stars are going to follow his path opting for the U.S. and playing in Major League Soccer? Yeah, I, I think I'm excited by it. And, and in a lot of ways, I do, I do agree with him. I expect more of those players to come to MLS in the near future. I, th I think a lot of credit has to be given to uh, the United States and, and their World Cup performance for really making people stand up and notice uh, MLS. I think, I think the biggest thing that's happened here is that the league will have really created a newfound level of respect. I think it was starting to grow and garner it as time was going on, but uh, this really will have created quite a spike and uh, it's also very difficult to ignore the fact that someone like Kaká 
and others started with David Beckham, and we've had Thierry Henry come as well, and some other top stars and whatnot. Now Kaká, they're coming to this league. They see something that's exciting about it, and it's going to make other players, other top players, say, you know, there's got to be some. There is something about this league that looks good and and is worth playing in. I like the signing of Kaká if he can capture uh, some of his older form uh, and and be the type of player that he was a few years ago. Um, I think he's kind of uh, lost a little bit of the luster in him because we've he's kind of disappeared off the the main um, you know the main screens the main television screens of the big European teams and so uh, I think that uh, you know he kind of has lost a little bit of luster but if he can recapture that he's going to be a great signing for Orlando City and I think yeah like like you said it's just another one of those things that more and more people are going to come here and see it as an option there's talk that uh, Frank Lampard in the next week or so is going to sign with New York City FC so uh, other players are coming yeah it's still for some of them a little bit of that retirement home mentality but uh, for me it's if those players keep coming going to attract more television revenue television audience and perhaps some of those younger stars like a like a Yedlin with Seattle who's there's talk that he could be leaving Major League Soccer. Uh, perhaps that is, is somebody that uh, could now stay in the league a little bit longer than what he has been. Number eight, what do you think of Marco Bustos, the Whitecaps youngster and uh, Winnipeg-born player, going to the camp with the Chilean under-20 national team after representing Canada at youth level? Uh, for me, it, it, it's two sides. One, um, I look at it and I think, you know what, he's going – there's talk that he's basically going because he's trying to attract more interest in getting a, a club contract and getting signed to a team, and maybe that might pressure the Whitecaps into signing him. He is going to uh, reportedly go to the Canada uh, squad as well. So for me, it's a little bit like, well, what are you going for? If you are going for just a contract, making some club get a contract, give you a contract, well, you know, to me, that's it's a little bit like, um, I don't know, a little bit shady, I guess you could say. Uh, and if you do have the plan of sticking with Canada, why are you going to the Chilean U-20 team in the first place? It's almost like he is going, and I used this analogy earlier, it's like you're dating two girls and uh, you're going to pick the best one that's going to uh, basically put out first. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And for me, it bothers me to, to hear that he's going to be doing this. He's obviously, for me, playing the field career-wise uh, by doing this. If he's obviously going to go have a bit of a run out with the Chilean under-20s and then follow that by going with the Canadian under-20s. Um, I can understand as well how our most passionate of Canadian national team fans will be concerned because, it, it, again, you're looking at someone you would think is a potentially future Canadian international, may potentially in the future be an important player for us at the senior level, and he may very well slip through and end up playing for the for the country of his sort of real origin through his family lineage. But, uh, yeah, it, it's something that gives me concern because it, it makes you wonder, well, what is really at the foundation of why he's doing this why is he going to go out and 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 have this run with a country like chile um when realistically i don't know if he would really have much of a future internationally playing for them as he would with canada number nine on the starting 11 does tonight's white caps win a one nil victory over the seattle sanders make you forget and forgive their last two performances i would say that it makes me feel better um, I think they re tonight they looked like a team that realized they had played very poorly against Montreal and Colorado. And tonight they decided to show up and really put in the kind of performance that we've uh, got, gotten used to expecting from them this season. And uh, we certainly got it, particularly in the first half. Uh, they, they battled it out through the second half and got home. Um, there was something about tonight that was actually very positive and encouraging because the way the last two games went, you kind of got a sense that they could have ended up creating a bit of a downward slide. But tonight, by performance and result, they just seemed to stop what was just two bad games right in its tracks. And now they can actually look forward to the remaining games that they've got, particularly in this busy month of July. I haven't forgiven, I haven't forgotten, because I think the fans deserve better than what they performed over the last two games. 
tonight was a great example of putting together a full team effort. But for me, it all comes down to what they do next week. If they follow it up with another good performance, then yeah, I, I can forgive and forget those uh, two dreadful games. But un until they do that, I need to see a run of form from the Vancouver Whitecaps over a couple games. Number 10, which team is taking home the Cascadia Cup this year? Well, you can't argue with the Vancouver Whitecaps right now. What do they have, seven points out of a possible, uh, I can't even remember, nine I think it is. Uh, so for me, the, the Whitecaps are the team uh, to beat in this tournament right now. Um, they are on track to win it. Seattle is kind of treading water now with just two points through three matches. Portland has that outside chance of, of trying to catch up, but right now it is the Vancouver Whitecaps trophy in their possession, and they have, a, I think, the best opportunity to keep it. Yeah, it is the Whitecaps for me as well. They are in the pole position, especially after winning tonight. They're, they're the, I think they're the only team that has garnered wins so far this season in this competition, and I think at this stage it's going to be difficult for one of those other two teams to, to overcome them. I, I think it's only Portland that's going to be the side that will be able to catch them. So I think in many ways uh, Silverware will be retained, and it will be this trophy for sure. And finally, on the starting 11, Simon, who will we see? in the World Cup Finals next Sunday. We're going to get an all-South American derby clash, and it will be one epic encounter between Brazil and Argentina at the Maracanã. Um, you, you may say the odds are stacked against that scenario from the fact that Brazil are up against it uh, with Germany, but I think the, the crest of momentum from the home fans and the supporters will make them overcome uh, the organization and the uh, steeliness of the Germans, and they'll get to the final. Argentina showed they had the balance of not just attack but defense today. Uh, garner me some respect, I think, in many regards. And I think they'll run into a Dutch side that will give them a good test, but they'll be very heavy-legged, I think, the Dutch, after the, the, the efforts they had to put in today to just get to that semi. So I expect Brazil versus Argentina. I said Germany was going to win it. So I see them making it. And what the hell? I'm going to say a European team is going to take home the World Cup on South American soil, and it is going to be a Germany-Netherlands final next week. Very good. <laughs> there you have it. Simon's going to go. stick around for the MLS scores in just a minute. And uh, speaking of MLS scores, Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk Fantasy League contest presented by Umbro Canada. The task for June was quite simple. Finish 30th in the overall standings through the month of June, and you walk away with an Umbro prize pack. So in the June standings, you had to finish 30th, and Christopher Bromley and his Show Me the Mane squad did just that. Well, now it's time for the July contest. And it is summer. People take vacation. They don't necessarily pay attention to their their uh, Fantasy League brackets. So we're going to give the chance for those who, well, kind of lost the plot a bit in their Fantasy League contest. I know a couple people down at the bottom of the Fantasy League that aren't doing so well, so we're going to give them a chance to win something. So if you have the worst overall score through the month of July... So if your score through July is the worst from all the July points, you're walking away with a number of prize pack. If there's a tie, whoever is worst overall through the entire Fantasy League over the last few months, you're the winner. <laughs> it is going to be fun. Visit Facebook.com slash SoccerTalkVan for all the details on how to join the league because it's not too late to get in and... Uh, to find out more about our July contest. Umbro, proud to be the official supplier of the Canadian men's and women's national team celebrating 90 years of expertise in the game. If you, wanna, if you want your club to play like the pros, dress them like the pros at Umbro.com. Umbro, the heart and soul of football. Up next, we're going to talk World Cup with Jonathan Tannenwald and get the latest scores from the MLS. All that is coming up next. Yeah. This. 
This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. The Donnelly Group has soccer fever, so they're throwing open the doors to nine of their famous public houses at 9 a.m. for all 64 matches in Brazil. Come watch the game live. Brunch is served at every venue, and there are 540 Carlsbergs. So wake up with soccer, Samba style, and make sure you're at one of these Donnelly Group establishments. The Blackbird, the Butcher and Bullock, Tavern, the New Oxford, Library Square, Cinema, the Bimini, Lamplighter, or Three Brits. Get details at donnellygroup.ca. The 2014 season of EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. Welcome to the front lines of the game. Welcome to the big league. The one that provides an elevated level of competition for high-performance players within BC and contributes to player development for the Canadian national team and professional opportunities here and abroad. This is where you're going to see the top youth players in action. Catch some of the most intense soccer in the province. EA Sports BC Soccer Premier League. For information and upcoming games check out bcsoccer.net the vancouver street soccer league isn't out to change the world just give the men and women in our homeless communities a chance to play soccer regardless of skill everyone's included in practices and matches with teams from ubc the vancouver police department the vancouver mayor's office and more the focus is fun but it builds skill and confidence and that can change someone's world find out more at vancouverstreetsoccer.com this message fueled by Duso's fresh pasta and sauce. Proud to support community on and off the pitch. What's it like to score in the beautiful game? Come to Kia Vancouver before July 13th and score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4,000 in cash bonuses on select models. And only at Kia Vancouver, score free lifetime car washes, free lifetime oil changes, free lifetime airport shuttle and parking, and always service with a smile. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise at KiaVancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. Wendy presents the 499 night owl combo welcome to wendy's can i take your order i'm so excited the 499 night owl combo is back that i became <laughs> the night owl i see that nice costume i stayed up all day making it oh the tights are a nice touch the wendy's 499 night owl combo with a dave's hot and juicy cheeseburger small fries and drink taxes extra available after 9 p.m all summer long at participating wendy's now that's better they're not tights they're meggings man leggings no meggings Attention, please. There will be nothing funny in the next 30 seconds. And this is not a joke. This is serious. People are using our funny. Online people are pretending to be... VancouverJobShop.ca And this is no laughing matter. So if you search for us online, make sure it reads VancouverJobShop.ca Make sure there's a blue map of your area in the upper left-hand corner. Should we do something funny now? No, no funny. Not even a raspberry? Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Long name, amazing results. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on AM650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. studios, here's your host, Tyler Gray. We'll hear from some of the uh, principals in the Whitecaps match a little bit later on. Whitecaps victorious in that one, 1-0 one over the Seattle Sounders, plus some World Cup talk with Jonathan Tannenwald, who covers Major League Soccer in the U.S. men's national team for Philly.com in just a minute. It's Tyler Green. In studio with Mo the Moose, best ventriloquist in the business. And Simon Fudge at BC Place has the scores from around Major League Soccer. Five games in the Major League Soccer yesterday on the 4th of July. It was Houston Dynamo 2, New York Red Bulls 2. Two goals for uh, Bradley Wright Phillips of New York in that game. SC Dallas 2, Philadelphia Union 1. It was Colorado Rapids 1, Columbus Crew 1. Real Salt Lake defeated New England Revolution by two goals to one, and it finished New England LA Galaxy 2, Portland Timbers 2. Two other games involving Canadian teams today in MLS, Toronto SC falling 2-1 at home to D.C. United, and Chivas USA through a late goal by Eric Kubo Tobarez defeated the Montreal Impact by a goal to nil. There is one more game tomorrow in MLS. It's Sporting Kansas City against Chicago Fire. The Donnelly Group showing all 64 World Cup matches live. Just a few left. Visit donnellygroup.ca to find all the Vancouver venues. Joining us now for the World Cup report presented by the Donnelly Group is Jonathan Tannenwald, who covers Major League Soccer and the U.S. Men's National Team for Philly.com. Jonathan, thanks for joining the show. Tyler, as you know, I've been listening for a long time, and you guys do a really great job. It's great to be on. 
Well, thank you very much. And and let's get started with uh, some World Cup chat. We're going to talk Major League Soccer, U.S. Men's National Team as well. But let's talk about this uh, this World Cup and a lot of quarterfinal matchups so far. Uh, just your thoughts that have made it so far through to the semifinals and how this looks for this tournament. It's been so much fun. You know, and I know that you know, we fret about the goal scoring going down in the knockout rounds and all that, but it, it, it's great to, to step back for a minute and just realize how much fun this whole month has been and how great it has been to, uh, to see so many people in the U.S. and Canada paying attention to soccer. I've been following the sport now for 15 or 16 years. I got inspired by the game in 98 when I was in France during the World Cup back then. And to, to go from, you know, waking up at 2.30 in the morning in 2002 to watch the U.S. play Mexico to now when all the U.S. games on American television are averaging 20 million viewers. And, and even I noticed, Tyler, the most watched round of 16 game on CBC was the U.S. and Belgium. So I guess there's some folks up there who care about the U.S. team after all. <laughs> And now we're going to have these these two wonderful semifinals with some of the great heavyweights, you know, Germany, Brazil, and, and Netherlands, Argentina. I'm really excited, and I think it's really going to get a lot of attention in the U.S. and Canada, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, let's get into uh, we're going to get into the U.S. team here in just a second, but uh, about that semifinal and and you know Brazil now going in with with a player that's really irreplaceable. But how do you how do you even try to replace a guy like Neymar? I have no idea, and, and I'll be very interested to see what Phil Scolari comes up with because he's not one of these you know, creative, attack-minded guys. He is a very defensive-minded coach, and he's got good reason for it because that's how he wins, and he's won the World Cup before with Brazil. But I think it's going to fall on Oscar a lot, and then uh, you know, Scolari is going to have to gamble some with some of the other guys who he brings in, does he trust Joe or Fred or Bernard or William? It'll be very interesting to see. Now, who do you like in the semifinal matchups? Does Germany now have the advantage there? And then uh, on the other end, uh, Angel Di Maria looks like he might be in question for that semifinal match with the Netherlands, but then they had to go and play just a, an hour and 20-minute match. So who do you like uh, moving forward here? Well... My head says Germany and Argentina, uh, but I have a very hard time seeing Brazil losing at home. They haven't lost at home for 40 years or something like that. And my heart wants a Brazil-Argentina final because it's just such a great rivalry and it would be a, a perfect capstone to this you know, South American World Cup and it would, I think, introduce a lot of the newly minted soccer fans, especially in the U.S. and Canada, in recent years who, who follow England first and foremost, and maybe then they follow Italy or Spain or something like that. But Brazil and Argentina have done so much for soccer, and i, I, I got to tell you, Tyler, I'd love to see Lionel Messi and Argentina beat Brazil in the final and lift that trophy in the Maracanã. Wouldn't that be something? That would definitely be something. We're speaking with Jonathan Tannenwald, who covers uh, Major League Soccer, the U.S. men's national team for Philly.com, joining us here on Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk. Uh, Jonathan, when you look at this tournament as a whole, who has been the biggest surprise for you so far, be it a player or an entire team? Well, I think team-wise, it has to be Costa Rica. I mean, I always thought that they were good. They really should have won the Hex in CONCACAF. They had every right to finish in first place, but that game in the snow was the real reason why the U.S. finished in first place. And in terms of an individual player, I'll go with James Rodriguez of Colombia. I mean, I know he has, had already started to make a name for himself, but you've you got to think, Tyler, about the number of kids at home who have been watching this World Cup in the U.S. and Canada and elsewhere around the world. And, and I hope that, that the kids out there who want to play for the U.S. national team someday, maybe now they want to be a little more like James Rodriguez than John Terry or Steven Gerrard or somebody like that. On the opposite uh, sort of spectrum, who who do you think has has been a guy that you know has kind of maybe uh, disappointed a little bit? For me, a guy like Hazard with uh, with Belgium, a lot of uh, potential there for him, and and he just really came up short for me in this tournament. 
Well, I could name anybody from the England team <laughs> if I want if I wanted to, and I do, in fact, want to name lots of people from the England team. Uh, but I'll give you another one, uh, and, and and that's. Uh, Benoit Suakoto and, and Samuel Etsu and Alex Song and the guys on Cameroon, mm-hmm. who not only lost all of their games, but really just did not present themselves well. Uh, you know, they, they had the, the almost striking before they went to the World Cup. They had the, you know, the, the chemistry issues on and off the field, and I just think all around, uh, they should have done a lot better in this World Cup, and they didn't look good at all. Right now, score the best price during Kia's 2014 FIFA World Cup sales event. Plus, get 0% financing for 84 months and up to 4000 in cash bonuses on select models. You're listening to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk. Tyler Green uh, in with you. Joining me on the telephone is Jonathan Tanwald, who uh, writes for Philly.com, covers Major League Soccer, the U.S. men's national team. And we're going to switch gears and talk some uh, U.S. Uh, men's national team now with Jonathan and how do you rate this tournament so far, Jonathan, with them in it, uh, obviously exiting in the round of 16? You know, it's so strange because coming into coming into the draw, let's start there, back in December, mm-hmm. the expectation was the U.S. should get out of the, of the group no matter what because they're good enough to do that. Well, then the draw comes along and it absolutely hammers them. And I end up having to try to explain to all the non-soccer people who I know that at the same time as the expectation should be to get out of the group, that it would be one of the all-time great accomplishments in American soccer history to get out of that group. And it was. It really was. And it's a credit to Jurgen Klinsmann, and it's a credit to those players. But that game against Belgium ended, I think, with a sour taste for a lot of people because they could have won it. Mm-hmm. And I will stick my neck out there, Tyler, and I will say they should have won it. And I know you might disagree with me, and I know Simon might disagree with me, and a lot of outside observers in Canada might disagree with me. But the U.S. had every chance to win that game if they would have just gone for it a little more. And they didn't. And that was the disappointing thing, that Jurgen Klinsmann held on to that third substitute, I think, for too long. He froze in the headlights a little bit too much. This is a guy who has been encouraging American soccer to go for it more. And when you look back on the style of play they played with, it wasn't all that different from what they played under Bob Bradley and Bruce Arena and elsewhere. And Jurgen Klinsmann casts himself as this great transformational figure. I think he's done a very good job. He's made real improvements. But in the really big moment in that Belgium game, he froze, honestly. And it, and it cost the U.S. that game a chance to play Argentina in the quarterfinals, and never mind the fact that Argentina would have beaten them because they would have. But can you imagine, Tyler, the U.S. in the quarterfinals of the World Cup on a Saturday afternoon, the game on ABC, the big network television down here, and Univision playing Argentina and Lionel Messi would have been the, by far the biggest game in American soccer history, probably 30 to 35 million television viewers and who knows what kind of a spectacle that would have been like. It would have been huge, and uh, but I look at it and I think, do people now have these, you know, losing to Belgium, do people now have that expectation that it's just another tournament for them, um, or do people have higher expectations for what this team could and possibly should do? I think they absolutely have higher expectations, and they should have higher expectations. And not just because of the Belgium game, but because, look, they were... They were 30 seconds away from beating Portugal, Mm -hmm. and it slipped through their grasp. They could have drawn Germany, not that they were going to, but they had a couple chances there at the end where they could have tied the game. It's because of how close they came in those games to showing really everything that they could be when they did get on the front foot and they did play some attacking soccer. That, that people say, yes, this team can do more and we should expect more, and we should expect now in the next four years the, the, the kind of more attacking and more possession and more technical soccer that Jurgen Klinsmann has said he thinks he can instill in, in American soccer. It's time now to see it. 
We're speaking with Jonathan Tannenwald, writer for Philly.com, who covers Major League Soccer, the U.S. men's national team, with us here on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650. Uh, Jonathan, what is this team missing right now with the with the U.S. men's national team that could take them to that next level? And is that possibly uh, just the future with guys like uh, those young guys, like Green, like Yedlin, and, and so forth? Well, they're missing a striker. And I think this is something else that really bit Jurgen Klinsmann in the backside. <laughs> When Josie Altidore got hurt, you look at the guys he left behind, and look, Landon Donovan would have buried that chance that Chris Wondolowski had. Fine. I think he should have been there for exactly that situation, but that's water under the bridge. And the bigger problem is that your striker options were Aaron Johansson, who was injured, or Chris Wondolowski, and that was pretty much it. No Eddie Johnson, no Terrence Boyd. You know, Eddie Johnson or Terrence Boyd in particular, when Altidore got hurt, that's when you needed a player like that. And, and the, look, the U.S. historically hasn't had a top-level striker, save for maybe Brian McBride, possibly Eric Winalda back in the day, but really McBride or Joe Max Moore are, are two of the best we've ever produced. Either of those guys, you can imagine. Imagine what it would have been like with a Brian McBride or a Joe Max Moore in their prime playing in the striker position, Tyler. It would have been very different. Definitely. Um, so the striker is number one, but that's always been at the top of the list. The other is they do need some more more technical players in the midfield. And I hate to use that word because I think it's just such jargon. But they need some creative guys, some guys who can hold on to the ball a little better. I was disappointed to not see Mick Discarude at all in this World Cup, although certainly... Um, Julian Green paid off the gamble that Jurgen Klinsmann took on him with the way he took that goal. And what the performances of guys like him and DeAndre Yedlin and John Brooks showed is that Jurgen Klinsmann was right to go with the young guys, and now is the time to do it even more. When you look at, I talked about some of these creative guys, now they're really coming up the ranks of the American development system you think about guys like Louis Gill and Real Salt Lake, who I know everybody in uh, Vancouver knows very well. Jose Villarreal, who used to play for the L.A. Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, Yedlin, obviously, in Seattle, is going to be a big player on this national team in years to come. Will Trapp of the Columbus crew, Benji Hoya of the Chicago Fire. Uh, and then you've got some of these dual national guys coming down the pipe who might if, the, if, if Jurgen Klinsmann can get him, if, I, I think that when Darlington Nagby is eligible for his U.S. citizenship, Jurgen Klinsmann should be on the phone with him right away. I would imagine he will be, and I hope he plays for the U.S. Um, Kakuta Mana of the Whitecaps is another. I'm fascinated by the fact, Tyler, that he wants U.S. citizenship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and maybe you probably know more than I would as to whether if he goes down that route, if he does, I'd love to see him. For the, for the U.S. national team, I think he could he could play a role. So people talk, obviously, about the the possibility and the, the growth that this team has. What's different about this team, perhaps, in, in 2014 and looking ahead to 2018, this U.S. men's national team, that we haven't seen? Because historically, we've seen the U.S. team get to the quarterfinals once, get to the round of 16 on, on a semi-regular basis. Why is this any different this time around that makes you think that this team does have the potential to go further in 2018, perhaps? Well, let me differentiate the present from the future. Because one of the biggest criticisms that's been leveled at Jurgen Klinsmann is, I talked earlier about how the style that they were playing with really wasn't all that different from how Bob Bradley and... and um, Bruce Arena played. Mm-hmm. So in the present, no. They haven't made that dramatic improvement that Jurgen Klinsmann promised. And I, I, I've talked to friends you know, who, are, who are sort of casual soccer fans and they've only t- started tuning in during the World Cup. And what I've told them is, it's like trying to push a house up a hill. You make these little incremental progresses where this was the first time ever that they made the round of 16 in consecutive World Cups. You know, that's an incremental progress, the big one. And in the World Cup, 
you make bigger incremental movements than you do during the other three years and as Major League Soccer grows and so on and so forth. And, you know, I talked about how close they game against Portugal and Belgium that the increment of growth would have been really big if they could have beaten Portugal, even if they'd lost to Belgium, because they may well have. If they'd won that game or if they'd beaten Belgium, it would have been even bigger. And now we can talk about the future and the guys who, as I said, who are coming up the youth ranks now. And you've got some other guys who I haven't mentioned who are playing abroad, like Junior Flores, who's with Borussia Dortmund, who's been a star of the U.S. Uh, under-17 uh, national teams. Rubio Rubin is another one. He's 18 now. Paul Oriola at Tijuana is 19. Um, you know, if Julian Green can get on the World Cup team at at, at at, at age 19 now, there's no reason why over the next four years guys like Ruben and Flores should get a shot. Right. And I'll tell you what also. If they can – you know Gideon's LLM who plays for Arsenal, mm -hmm. who's got like you know six different nationalities or whatever it is, <laughs> but he grew up in the U.S. and he's looking now at getting U.S. citizenship with, from what's been reported an eye on playing for the United States national team. If Jurgen Klinsmann can get him, that's an enormous feather in his cap. And, and, and could send a really big statement. We're speaking uh, to Jonathan Tanwald, who writes for Philly.com, covers Major League Soccer and uh, the U.S. Men's National Team for that publication. Our World Cup coverage presented by the Donnelly Group, showing all 64 World Cup matches live. Visit DonnellyGroup.ca to find all the Vancouver venues. And uh, Jonathan, just uh, switching gears here with that development and, and Major League Soccer going to be a big part of that U.S. Men's National Team in years to come. What needs to happen with Major League Soccer in order to keep developing those young players, is it, is it as simple as those new teams and that television money being pushed into that development frame? Well, I think the television money is the, big, the biggest thing because teams can't make an excuse anymore that they don't have the money for a, a, you know, a full-time academy and you know, paying the, the players that they do develop enough – to stay in Major League Soccer instead of going to Scandinavia or second division teams in the bigger countries in Europe to sit on the bench. You can't have that happen anymore. The level of MLS has increased dramatically over the last five, ten years, and now the money's coming in. And look, I know that Jurgen Klinsmann has his issues with Major League Soccer. I disagree with him on some of them. I agree with him on some of them. I think a lot of people will say the same thing. But the television broadcasters in the U.S., and, and I know this to be the case in Canada, too, they look at MLS, they see how it has grown, they see the quality of players that are starting to come through, and I'm talking about American and Canadian players here, not just the international signings. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to step up and say, we're going to give you the money that you need so that you can do all the things that everybody wants you to do in terms of player development and becoming a bigger, more established league that not only develops the players, but pays them enough to stay in the U.S. And in Canada, too. And I think we're going to see that now. $90 million a year is a lot of money. And, you know, people have talked, Tyler, about, you know, oh, the salary cap is such a thing holding back Major League Soccer, you know, and the single entity and so forth. I, I agree and I disagree with various parts of it. But consider this, that the salary cap now is, what, $3.5 million U.S. a year or so? Imagine if it's $5 million or $6 million, which I think it will be under this new TV deal, and then maybe $10 million down the road. How much does that change things? It changes things a lot. And I think we will, you know, I think and I hope we will see MLS be able to keep the guys they develop, like a Mana, like a Zach Pfeffer and a Moby Kugo in Philadelphia, like a DeAndre Yedlin in Seattle, a Luis Gill in Salt Lake, so that they're growing and developing and becoming stars in MLS and playing a lot and leading their teams. And look, if Manchester United or Liverpool come along and want to put $10 million down on the table for a transfer fee, fine. In reality, every league in the world is a selling league at some point or another. Right. But it's, it's the lesser moves. It's the Breck shade of Stoke City when he doesn't play. You know? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Or the guys who skip the MLS Super Draft to go and play in Scandinavia only because it's more money, and then they realize they don't like it and they want to come back. 
the new money in the TV deal is going to help with that so that the players are in MLS from the start and stay there, and it's going to raise the accountability for the coaches and the front offices in Major League Soccer so that they have to be better and they have to be developing better players and playing better soccer. Jonathan, it's a mouthful, I realize, but I hope it all makes sense. <laughs> Jonathan, we could go on and on, and uh, uh, love getting uh, getting you on here for the first time, and and hopefully uh, we don't uh, have to wait a few months before we get you on again. So, thanks so much for joining us and uh, getting uh, in depth with uh, the U.S. National Team World Cup and Major League Soccer. Thanks again. It's a great pleasure. I'll uh, be out in Vancouver uh, in August for the game against Sporting Kansas City. I'm heading out west for a couple games out there, including the All Star game. And that one at BC Place, I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll catch up then. Thanks again, Jonathan. Great to finally get uh, Jonathan Tannenwald on. That was Philly.com's Jonathan Tannenwald joining us to talk all things World Cup. Our World Cup coverage is presented by the Donnelly Group, showing all 64 World Cup matches live. Visit DonnellyGroup.ca to find all the Vancouver venues. And, of course, what are you doing during the World Cup? Well, you want to watch the World Cup matches and You don't want to get out and get the oil change. You don't want to get a tune-up, which is why closed-loop mobile oil change is the perfect solution. They'll give you a tune-up. They'll give you an oil change, and you don't have to lift the finger. They'll come to you. Contact closedloopoil.ca. They'll come directly to your home to maintain your vehicle with warranty-approved parts and fluids. Closedloopoil.ca. The perfect solution. You don't want to miss the game. They're in the semifinals now. So book closed loop oil to come during the game. You watch. They do all the uh, the work on your car. It's all set. Closedloopoil.ca. Quick stoppage in play here. A lot of great stuff from Jonathan Tannenwald. Simon and I will discuss some of those things a little bit later on in the program. But we'll get the latest news and rumors from around the globe. For Uniglobe One Travel, next.